All right, I'm actually not going to talk very long today. I do have a folder out there uh, that it basically explains what I'm going to go over today. There's not really a lot in it, but there's a few things that I wanted to show you. All right, and I'm not really going to start that much on the uh, BTC Uber site today. In fact, if you look at what I've done so far, you're going to go, you didn't do anything, which is not true. Look, it's really coming together nice, isn't it? All right. But the thing is, if I go over there and I do a view page source, you'll notice that there's a, it's already being set up. Because I've got my div set up, my header, my nav bar, my footer area, etc. All right, so that's where we're going to pick it up next time. But for, oh, and, and the other big thing, of course, is I put my favicon in there. See the little Uber guy right there? So, all right. So we'll talk about all that in more depth and breadth of coverage next week. But as far as the stuff that's in, oops, not there, the stuff that's in the folder for today, let's just go over it. All right. I literally got online yesterday and I, I, I typed into Google, what makes a good website? And one of the first articles that I found that I actually thought was pretty good was this one. Okay. Now, look, take a look at this. Everybody see the title right here? It says, good website characteristics. Everybody see that? And then notice here, and I was talking to the class yesterday, and I mentioned to them, I don't know if you agree with this or not, there's a big difference between a good website and an effective website. You can write a very good website. You know, it, it can have everything that anybody might ever want or need. But if no one ever goes and visits it, technically it's not a good website. All right? And you can build a very effective website in that it gets visited often, people use it, people abuse it, whatever, that's not really all that well written. All right? But you'll see this and in the next article talking about some of the things that are key components. Appearance. All right? You'll notice in here, I mean, that most of this stuff is common sense. Good use of color. I said this to the class yesterday, and I don't know if you've ever heard this or not. Does anybody know what color is the hardest on the central nervous system? Blue or red? Red. And I was talking to the class yesterday and I said to me, maybe that's one of the reasons stoplights are red. Because they, you know, it basically they have danger, danger, Will Robinson type of thing connected to them. All right? So you really, for example, you shouldn't have a red background. There was a story, I, I wish I would have kept it, but there was a hyperlink years and years ago about somebody who had made a site, and it was for people who um, were schizophrenic and had different psychological problems and made the background red. You don't do stuff like that. Know your audience. All right? So have a good use of color. Remember, it may not sound, sound like much, but approximately it's between 5 and 10% of people in this country are colorblind. So if you happen to pick a color for your text that's very similar <clears throat> to the color for your background, it's hard for them to discern or tell the difference between where one starts and where one ends. All right? Have text that's easy to read. All right? I was talking to Andrew yesterday. He was in here working, and he sent an email out to a guy that he's been working on a project for, and he asked me to look at it, did it sound good, and it sounded fine. But I said, the font is really small, and I know this guy has bad eyes. And I know he, I don't even know if he knows how to, how to increase the font size on his computer. I have no idea. So again, if I'm going to be creating a site for, let's say, AARP, as an example, I'm probably going to make bigger text than I am if I'm creating a site for little kids. And, and be real literary, too. <clears throat> We're going to talk a little bit about fonts in just a bit. Be real literary of fonts that you use. Because some fonts might look really cool to you, but when you put them on a site, they may or may not be that cool to the people looking at the site. Have meaningful graphics. One of the things, too, <clears throat> and they talk about here, that you want graphics because you don't want just boring text. I totally agree with that. That said, text has its place on a website. Again, depending on what it is you're trying to do. 
if you're selling products, you're going to have a lot more graphics on a really good website, right? Because you'll have something like, you know, a, a shopping cart type of experience. All right. Quality photography. We're going to talk about this in just a minute. And I was especially gearing this talk yesterday to the first year people. A lot of you in here, when you did your your uh, when you did your BTC Uber site, did a pretty nice job as far as quality images, etc. There were a few people in the first year. If you looked at their images, all right, what they did. It's the old the old uh, analogy I've given before to silly putty. Anybody does everybody here know what silly putty is? Did you ever see that when you were a little kid? All right, and back in the days. Back in, you know, and they still have it on a lot of papers today. The the, the comics or the, the funnies, green sheet, whatever you want to call them, on the weekend is in color, right? So what we used to do as little kids is you take your silly putty, you'd put it on the comic, you'd push it off, and then you'd have the image. And then you could pull it and distort it, all right? Well, what some people did on their BTC Uber site is they distorted the photographs. In other words, it was maybe meant to be size X, but they changed it so it's size X times 10. And they didn't do a really good job of scaling. So we're going to talk about that today. Talk about a free product you can use to help you do that. Simplicity. Again, as, the, as it says here, keep the site simple. Stuff that you might find impressive, other people may or may not. As far as content. Keep your copy short and organized. Update it regularly. We've talked about this. People don't like to come out to a site and, and keep seeing the same stuff there. If that's the case, why do they keep coming out there? All right, speak to the visitors. Yeah, well, that's fine. It says, what about glitz? And it says, flashy graphics and animation are tempting. But the idea is when you use multimedia, make it have a purpose. <coughs> And I've mentioned this to you in other classes before. Don't put something out there just for flash. All right. It should be functional. This stuff, again, this should be something you already know. Your copy should be error free. I used to always tell students years ago, you know, because a lot of students said, you know, they, they would come in and they'd ask me for help on their resume, et cetera, and they'd look at it, and I'd give them some advice, and, and sometimes they'd follow it, sometimes they wouldn't, which is fine. But I'd always tell them, <clears throat> before you send the resume out, if you don't want me to look at it, that's fine. Have somebody else look at it. And ideally, have the person that you have look at it should be somebody you respect, and it shouldn't be someone you're related to. I may have told you about this before. My mother's 85 years old. Until she was about 65 for about 10, 20 years, she worked as an administrative assistant for an advertising agency. She has the ability to go through a resume and literally take, take her finger, put it at the top, slide her finger down, and she can find any misspellings, bad uses of the English language, etc. That was a big part of her job. In fact, where she worked at this ad agency... She had two piles when resumes came in. And if they were bad, if there was a spelling error or, or a, some kind of a grammatical error, she th they were thrown out. That was just a policy of this place. Well, the reason I'm telling you that is when I graduated in 1978 from college the first time. Yeah, that's almost 40 years ago. But the first time, I had her look at my resume. And, you know, it wasn't great. And it wasn't, there wasn't a whole hell of a lot on it. But she did her thing where she went through it. She goes... Oh, Jeff, it's fantastic. No, she lost all her objectivity. So when you have somebody look at it, whether it's a resume or whether it's text on a website, have someone look at it that you respect, not necessarily someone who's your good bud, All right, but someone who will be critical when they see something that looks wrong. A good website should be usable. We've talked about especially usability for all types of people especially people who are challenged. We've talked about this throughout your, your tenure here. All right. After you get it done, you should start optimizing it for search engine optimization. We're actually going to talk a little bit about that, not today, but when we get done, we'll talk about that a little bit. 
Now, this other article, and I'm not going to spend really any time going over it, but just so you know, it's called 60 Ways to Create a Successful Website. It's almost the same kind of stuff. Understanding your users, and they give you about 10 things to look for. Usability and accessibility that we just talked about, and they give you about 10 things to look for. Nailing your design and about 10 things to look for, etc. Look through this stuff, maybe not even so much now, but when you're out and you're trying to get a job. All right, if you're going to be showing your wares, so to speak. The other thing, too, and I'm, not, I, I'm, I'm just going to show you this. I'm not trying to put you or anybody on the spot, but all right. This is Luke's. This is Luke when he goes out to uh, Site 5. All of you now have the ability to put stuff out there on Site 5. I asked John yesterday, because Ben had asked me about this. Ben said, hey, you know, when we, um, after we graduate, can we keep our stuff out there? So I asked John, and John said, as of right now, Site 5 is paid through the end of 2016. And according to him, there's a little bit of, of money in that budget for the grant that Kristen's in charge of that she might be able to pay for it for another one or two years, and then hopefully Blackhawk, the regular school, will pick that up. And as far as I'm concerned, as long as there's space out there, we'll keep it out there indefinitely. So if it's two years from now and Luke comes on and looks at this, all right, and I haven't tried many of the rest of yours. I did try Eric's, and he's got his, remember when we did this, for the bootstrap class. And I did this yesterday because I had to because I didn't realize that when you go to all installing apps, we had a lecture with John, so I had to put it on real loud yesterday because it was just me and John and a couple other people. John's like, turn it off, turn it off. But all of you, all right? There you go. But that's because you have apps at the end. What's that? That's because you have apps HTML. Ah. So he noticed he's got a bunch of stuff up here. I'm looking. Do you have your um, Do you have your dancing thing in here? No. That's Darn. My other site, my personal Darn. One. All right. But he's got stuff in here. And the point is, even if you have not put anything out there, you have an account. All right. There's Thwans. Remember when you did the assignment for the bootstrap class? You all have stuff out here. This is a chance for you to be able to showcase yourself. What I would like you to do, please listen to this. Remember, it's four weeks from today you're presenting those projects. All right? And not, not, for, the, not for the Android, not for the iOS, but anything that you're doing that's web-related web and not for ASP.net because it doesn't work on here. What's that? No, no what I'm, what I'm, four weeks from today when you're going to be presenting, you're going to be presenting for this class. That's what we're going to have people in here, external people. So if you, know, if you want to go out there and show them, for example, what you did, I'd like you to have as much stuff out here as possible. And that way if people look at it, they have to just remember btcwsd.com and then, then they can come back if they want to contact me and say, what's the login for it one? type of an idea. All right? All right. Now, when we do this, and you should know this already, again, I don't, this is how bad I am at this. I don't remember what I'm about to ask you. I don't remember this anymore, but I don't know if, if those of you in here, when you took the 157 class, the Website development, XHTML, CSS. I don't know if you had me, if you had Arinda, if you had Jim Schmidt, or if you had somebody else. And I'm not even going to ask because it's probably a hodgepodge or a mixture. All right? Have you ever seen this before? I'm asking the question. Have you ever seen HTML5 boilerplate before? All right? I'm seeing some, some people are checking yes, and some people are saying, shaking their head yes, some shaking their head no. All right, I'm going to show you this in just a second, the download. But if I go to get a custom build, what I can do is I can download here 
a beginning bootstrap template, a beginning responsive website template, or a beginning HTML5 boilerplate template. All right? And once I do that, so let's say that I, I choose this one, the HTML5 one. Now I can put in here what I want to put in here. So what I did was I just went out and grabbed the HTML5 and left all the defaults. And that's what you see here under boilerplate, right there. It's got its own favicon, et cetera. And it's got a bunch of stuff. Really only has one page. And you go, wow, that looks a lot like your page. Not much on it. But when you, again, when you look at the page source, there's a lot in there already. It's put your meta tags in. It's put links into your CSS. It's put in links to Modernizer. Um, it's put links into jQuery. It's got some stuff on the bottom for Google Analytics, etc. So anytime anyone says, well, I don't even know where to start, you can always start here. All right. My hope is <clears throat> that by now, everybody has seen this file before. Okay. I was talking to the class yesterday. And Eric Meyer is kind of one of the fathers, so to speak, of CSS. He still writes on it. He still does a ton of work with CSS. All right. And I told the class yesterday, I said, well, you're all too young to remember this now, but he's kind of the Dick Clark of CSS. And, and I was right, because everybody in there was like, who the hell is Dick Clark? All right, type of an idea. All right. But the idea is, if you don't know this, if I go out and create a web page doesn't matter what it is. If I go out and create a web page like this, you know, looking at this page, there's a lot of CSS there. Changing the colors, changing the fonts, changing etc. All right? But if there was no CSS there whatsoever, hopefully you'd agree with this. It'll look a lot like that. It'll look really plain, for lack of better words. All right. But whether you realize it or don't realize it, even this file right here with no CSS in it still has CSS. So even a file that has absolutely no CSS in it still has CSS. And the reason for that is every browser by default applies a certain amount of browser CSS to your page. Well, the reason I'm telling you that is if we go back to here, and you look at this, this is taking pretty much, not every, but pretty much every CSS, or I'm sorry, every HTML tag there is, and it's saying, turn off margin padding and border. So it's trying to get rid of any CSS that the browser has put in. All right, that's, that's really the idea, by and large, of the CSS reset file. All right, so you've come in now with what we've done thus far. And, okay, we looked at this, we looked at this. So I started thinking, okay, when you start to build a website, what's important? All right, so, you know, in a, in a, I can make a picture of it, I can do whatever, but what starts to be important when I start to create the website? And I came up with three different things. The font is important. The logo is important. And the quality of your photography, animation, or whatever, that's important. Okay? I'm not saying there aren't other things. So I broke it down and I said, okay, with the font. Okay? What we're going to end up using in the, uh, what we're going to end up using in the site that we're going to be building is Google Fonts and a little bit of awesome CSS. So, There's Google Fonts. What's nice about Google Fonts when you start to look at it, notice Open Sans, 10 styles. All right, so if I look in here, there's 10 different styles. Okay, you can go and add something. You can start looking through it and say, oh, wow, look. Yeah, this would, maybe this would look really cool for part of my font. Maybe this would look really cool with it, etc. But you can come up and you can do things that are not exactly ordinary. 
there are boatloads of websites out there that use either some kind of a serif font, simple serif font, simple sans serif font, an Arial font, or a Times New Roman font. Back in the old days of Mac, almost everything that got done was done with a Helvetica font. All right, but you can come in here and you can add a little bit to it if you're so inclined. And then notice that there's awesome, font awesome CSS. And if we look at that, the iconic font and CSS toolkit. And the big thing is it's free. The other thing that some people get turned on by is, oh, wow, I can do this and I don't need to know JavaScript or use JavaScript. I like it already. All right. So that's just a couple things right there regarding fonts. All right, then let's go to logos. Now, and I'm not going to lie to you. When I came in and was creating my BTC Uber, I just took a couple of images, pasted them together, and that became my logo. So I didn't do a lot of work on it. But if I wanted to do more work on it, I could come out to cooltext.com. And if we look out here, let's assume for a second, I'm just going to grab one that I think looks a little different. Let's try this, animated glow. All right, so we can come up here and say BTC Uber. All right. And you can see what happened already. Okay. We can, we can change the text size. Okay, we can come in here and we can change the color. Any way that we want it to, to change. All right. We can change, we can add an image if we want to. All right, so there's other stuff that we can do. Now, you might look at that and say, I would never use that. It's irritating. That isn't the point. Again, it's free. You can come back and you can change it to any of these, but you should at least start doing that. Look through it. And that's what I'm going to do. Yes. One piece of advice when using that, uh, print the page where you put all the specs in for the, the text, the font size, and the colors and everything you change. So you've got those values. So okay. You have to change. Somebody says, wait, we've just decided we want to spell our name this way instead because it's unique. Yeah. It could be the exact same logo and you don't have to play around. Yeah. So if you play with those numbers, make sure you save what they are. And you can, you can even do that, and whatever, you can even put that into your HTML file. That's true. I didn't All right. know about that. But there's a lot of different stuff. Notice I just grabbed this, St. Patrick. Okay. And again, again, boom, it's created the logo for us. That's it. And it's free. Now, with some of the other ones that I put in here, just so you know, as an example, Logo Garden. Logo Garden is one of the more famous... ones out there for allowing you to build logos now it says start with an amazing logo it's free make my free logo that's a little bit misleading it is free but the logos that you can make on this site for free are limited they're harder to scale and do different things to they want you to have a paid account in order to be able to do whatever you want so why would you want a paid account you don't have to get one i'm just showing you but why would you want to do that well, notice if I click Make My Free Logo, it gives me a bunch of different designations. So I look in here, say, wow, well, look, you know, I'm doing this thing for <clears throat> BTC Uber Automotive. Wow, engines, race cars, etc. And, you know, maybe that's not it. Maybe I want a bus or something, but I could grab something from in here. All right, so notice it's after, after we do this, not real different from what we just looked at. So again, I can double click on here, change it to BTC, Uber, come in and do the same kinds of things. I can play with the colors, okay? I can grab this and I can play with the colors. So there's all sorts of stuff that you can do. Now, I, I believe that this is the one that they will ask you. If you say save now, notice, they ask you to create an account. And they're not doing that to spam you. What they do is they create the logo and they email it to you. So if you are going to create an account, put a real email address on it. Well, I'll put an account here, but I'll put, you know, hello at goodbye.com. Well, that's where they're going to send it then.
And what I did on here also, again, if you have an interest, notice I got a YouTube on using cool text. I've got a YouTube on Logo Garden. But I will tell you, if you get nothing else out of the, out of the uh, class period today, if you've never done this before, before you leave Blackhawk, if not before you leave today, go out to GIMP. GIMP.org. GIMP is a free image manipulation program. All right? What does that mean? That means you can create logos with it. You can size and resize images with it. You can do all sorts of things. And one of the things that I put out there for the, the GIMP one, just so you see it, where is it? There's some homepage and some other stuff, but I want to I want to actually show you. And you've, what I'm about to show you, you've got the link to this, so don't worry about you know, writing it down or anything. 20 best GIMP tutorials. Okay? And I wouldn't expect you to go through all 20, but if you're creating a site, so maybe, maybe it's July, you don't have a job yet, and either you think, well, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a job, even if it's non-paying, creating a website for someone, it'll help my portfolio or whatever. All right. I'd start looking through this. This shows you how to crop images, how to resize images, and when you resize them, it keeps their scale ability. All right. How to remove backgrounds, how to make a transparent background, how to play with fonts, how to reduce blur, how to add blur, how to change hair color. I always wonder when I see pictures like this, when that person is maybe, let's say that, that she's 16. By the time she's 30, if she's going to be proud of a picture like that or ashamed of a picture like that. I don't know. I mean, there, there are several people that are more than 20 or 25 years old that have the hair color of a different color. I get that. All right. But I look at my, my daughter, who's 19, almost 20 now, and what she did, she had her hair half purple and half red. Okay. And, and some of you are smiling. It, it looked worse than it sounds. And then she decided she was going to go with all red. Didn't work very well. Okay? And she even laughs now. And that was only a year or two ago. So, do you ever see this? I always thought it was a cool thing when they came out with colored contacts. You know, all those people who always wanted blue eyes could now have blue eyes. Have you ever seen that on a site? Maybe not that. But you look and they've got a lot of decent pictures. But a lot of the pictures, the people have red pupils. To me, that just looks bad. I, I have never met a person in real life that has red pupils. Maybe I haven't met enough people. I don't know. But you can change that. And there's other things that you can do in here. A lot of work with images, how to create your own animated GIF. All right? Which is cool because you could come in here, you could, go into, you could go into GIMP, you could create your own animated GIF. Now that you know iOS, and when we worked with GIFs, you can make it do whatever it, has, it is you wanted it to do, and then you can manipulate it yourself and show people that on your iPad or your iPhone. And it might not sound like much, but think about it. Hey, I created this using GIMP. Then I wrote a program to do the manipulation. You're showing a person you've got ability by doing something like that. All right. Adding 3D, glow effects, and there's a few other things in here too. All right. All right, and the last thing are photos. If you've never seen this site before, it's called depositphotos.com. Whoops, well, I don't know what the hell happened there, but something. Problems with their site. There it is. Royalty free stock photos. And I'll say this, and I don't think anybody here would disagree, especially someone like Mike who's got experience doing this professionally. Always, always, if you're ever going to take anything from someplace, be it out on the internet or someplace else, always go, and if they ever ask you, uh, if they ever say something like, 
click here to say you've read the agreement. Don't just click it. Most of them have an option now where you can print it out. And yeah, if it's 20 or 30 pages, you're probably not going to spend a lot of time doing it. But I usually when I do that, I save those to Word files. Now, typically, if I try to do something, even if something is copyrighted or whatever, and if I can prove that I'm doing it and it's educational, no one would come after me. See what I'm saying? But on the other hand, if I decided I was going to do some consulting work and I had this photo that maybe wasn't mine but I used on one of my sites and now I copied it over, I could get myself into a boatload of trouble. All right? You may or may not have heard of this. This is like probably five or ten years ago. So this is no joke. It's not a big story. But there was a guy, family business, some, some town in Colorado, or Colorado, in, in Arizona, outside of Phoenix. This guy had a dry cleaner shop. His family had had it for years. His last name was McDonald. He decided he was going to put arches, a little arch thing, you know, golden arches basically on his sign. It was two or three days later that he got a cease and desist order from attorneys from the McDonald Hamburger Company. Telling them we have nothing to do with you and you can't steal our logo. All right, the point is there are people out there that if you do things that you're not supposed to do, they're out looking for it, and they'll try to nail your butt to the wall. But most of the stuff that I've seen on here, it's stock-free photos. Plus, when you start to look through it, the quality on these photos, again, I don't know what's going on there, the quality on these photos is really, really good. All right? So you can grab photos from here, and let's say that you want to put them, so let, let's assume right now you grab this photo. And let's, let's just pretend here it's 2,000 wide by 1,000 high, all right? And you grab, let's say that you want to do a, a, this, like a, I don't know if that's supposed to be a geisha kind, kind of a person or what, but let's say you grab four or five of those, and they're all that size. And, and you got to really, it's, it look really nice, except you want to go and you want to put it near the top of your web page. And instead of 2,000 by 1,000, you need something that's 400 by 600 or something like that. Now you can go into GIMP, and you can look at one of those tutorials, and you can resize it, and it'll still look crisp and nice. It won't have that stretched look or that look where it's kind of bleached out when, you, when it was smaller and you made it too big or it was big and you made it too small. Again, when you're out there in the coming weeks and you're looking for a job, if you show your wares, that's what people are going to be looking for. And to be honest with you, part of, part of my reason for telling you this is selfish. Because I don't want people to think, oh my God, you know, their, their teacher allows them to put garbage like that out there. It's not that it's garbage. But the quality isn't what it could be. As of right now, I'm the person that I've been told is going to be teaching the 152-157 class in fall. That's what I've been told. I'm using a Muroc book. We're going to start building a website in there on day one. Day one. It's going to be, you know, it's going to look more like when we get done on day one, it's going to look a lot like that. But by the time we get done, hopefully it's going to look pretty darn professional. The quality will be there, etc. You know, and, and it'll have a simple slider on it because why? We'll, we'll create a slider, an image slider, but we'll do it in CSS. Then near the end of the semester, I'll be able to show them, now this is how you do it by using jQuery. And that shows them the kind of thing they'll learn in the jQuery class. All right, so there's going to be a natural lead-in or bleed-in with all this stuff. At least that's my hope. All right. When I tell my boss I would like to teach every class in the program, and well, we can't do that because of this, because of this, she doesn't understand, that's why. I can't sit there and say to somebody else, this is what I'd like you to show them. It just, I've tried doing it already, and it doesn't work. There's a couple other sites that are out here if you've never seen them. One is Pexels.com. I know there was a movie Pexels. It's not the same thing. Again, free photos, just like the other one. All right, and finally, the last one that's here, if you've never seen this before, it's Creative Commons. And you can go to search Creative Commons. 
If you get to this page, I'd recommend that instead of doing it from here, just choose Google Images. All right, and then, you know, again, I want to search for cars. Boom. Now, I'd have to go and refine that search. You get it. Maybe I want to put in here, I don't know, minivans. All right. Now, when you look through here, again, I, maybe this isn't right either, but if I want to start using something like this for the BTC Uber site, now I've got a bunch of free photos, and if I'm going to use something like this, all right, if I decide I want to go the other route, college students, now I can go there, or I can mix them, you know, BTC, Uber, BTC, Uber, etc. But I can try to grab pictures that look professional. And if I need to change the size, I can go into GIMP and I can do that. But what you should be doing is you should start being, being you know, saying, okay, I've got this square. I, you know, I got this piece of paper right here. This represents a web page. All right. Right now, nothing on it. You should always start by just literally, even if it's chicken scratch, putting on there the way you think you want it laid out. All right. Just to give you some kind of an initial idea, and then start laying it out that way. That's what we're going to start doing next week. Next week, we'll probably get the whole home page built. And I'll start to get into the CSS. We probably won't finish it. Then the next week, so two weeks from today, we'll finish the CSS and we'll go into the About page and do the same thing. There'll be enough time over this week, next week, and the next week, or however many weeks we have, all right, that we can build the Home page and the About page. You've already got those pages that have the contact stuff on it, so you just have to add that and add the CSS to it. All right, and please remember, again, Four weeks from today is May 19th. On that day, you will be presenting. I walked by, Denny Wright had his students present, uh, I think it was the 19th, so it was this week. What Denny does, and, and this is his call, There's absolutely, and actually it's a good thing that he does. He requires people when they present, if they're guys, all right, or gals, you, you've got to dress up. And that's part of your parade. I mean, literally expect you to have a sport coat on, etc. Women either a dress or a nice pantsuit or whatever. All right. Now, if it's four weeks from today and Luke comes in looking like he does now, there's nothing wrong with the way he looks. I'm not picking on him. All right. But but again, but the point the point is, he's got a prospective employer out there. I will tell you if I didn't mention this to you before. I have gotten con two different confirmations that one of the people who's going to be here is Aaron. He's the lead front-end web developer at Foremost. All right, Luke will tell you because he's already applied there, they are in the process of moving from one building in Janesville to another building in Janesville. Once they do, they're looking at hiring three or four more people. They've been very good. I mean, I know John, I know Andy. All right, but when you look on here, that's their lead developer. He graduated from the program here about 10 or 12 years ago. All right, and it's funny. That's the guy, you may or may not have noticed him, but you see his picture when you look. You know where Denny's room is? If you look right outside, there's a picture of a guy. He looks a little heavier set. He's standing by a bunch of networking equipment. He's lost a little weight. I actually didn't recognize him when he came into our advisory committee meeting. All right, so he's from Blackhawk. Tony's from Blackhawk, graduated two years ago. Derek's from Blackhawk, graduated three years ago. All right? So they've been very good about hiring people. And there are other people that work there. I told you, Micah is there. Amber has been there now for two or three weeks. She told me she loves it and hopes that she gets to stay there. So what I'm saying is I think it would be in your best interest to try to come across as professional as you possibly can, whatever that means to you. All right. So again, if you want to on Tuesday, uh, that Tuesday, which is the 17th, you can load anything you want to or need to onto this machine 
or you can put it out to Site 5 and double check it on this machine. I know we've had problems in the past. You all remember this when, when we did our, our things for Bootstrap and people would come in and say, man, it looks so much different on my screen than it does on yours. Remember that? Several people had it happened. So I'd like you all to even come up here, even if it's five minutes, and go through the stuff you're gonna be trying and make sure it looks the way on there you want it to look. And otherwise, you can hopefully adjust it accordingly. All right, any questions? All right, that's all that I have.